Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on inflammation and angiogenesis. In this video, what we're going to talk about is type 2 activation of endothelial cells, which is the type of activation which is more long-term than type 1 activation. So, previously in this playlist, we have looked at type 1 activation of endothelial cells, and I will briefly go over type 1 activation, but I won't go into the molecular details of it. Instead, I will just sort of summarize what it achieves, okay, and why type 2 activation is different and necessary, okay? Uh, so I would advise that prior to watching this, you watch my video on type 1 activation, although it won't be utterly necessary to have watched that. Uh, but if you want a complete picture of uh, the inflammatory response, you need to have watched the type 1 activation and now be watching this. Okay, right. Uh, so, what we're going to start off with is the same setup that we discussed in type 1 activation because the same, fundamentally the same thing is going to trigger type 2 activation as has triggered type 1 activation. Okay, we will then uh, talk about, have a little bit of a discussion about the different types of blood vessels and uh, for the people who have watched my type 1 activation videos, you'll just have to bear through that because it's going to be a repeat of what we've discussed in the type 1 activation video. We'll then just briefly summarise type 1 activation of endothelial cells and we'll then move on to type 2 activation. Okay, right. So, let's start with the setup. So, let's say um, we have a piece of tissue that you can imagine is the skin and that this piece of tissue has become infected with some bacterium, okay, and we will imagine that it could be Staphylococcus aureus infection, okay, so Staphylococcus aureus has infected our tissue and we are now going to uh, mount an inflammatory response to it. Now, everything we look at in this video is going to be part of the innate immune system. We haven't got on to uh, acquired immunity yet, or adaptive immunity. Everything is going to be innate immunity. So it's going to be neutrophils and macrophages, basically. Okay, uh, so Staphylococcus aureus. Uh, the logic behind its name is coccus means that the uh, bacterial cell is a small sort of ball-shaped cell. Okay, so it's round. I think that's what coccus means, round. Staphylo comes from staphylos, uh, which I think is Greek and means uh, grapes. Okay, and this is because when the Staphylococcus aureus uh, grows, the colony resembles a bunch of grapes. Okay, so you end up with the cells grouped together like so as a bunch of grapes. Well, it looks like a bunch of grapes. Okay, and the aureus means gold, basically, because if you grow Staphylococcus aureus on an agar plate, uh, the, the um, places where the colonies are growing appear a sort of golden colour, so the little colonies, when you look at them on a plate, just under uh, you know, a magnifying glass rather than a microscope, they just look like uh, golden little spots on the agar plate. Okay, now Staphylococcus aureus, if you gram stain it, appears blue, so I will colour one of these cells in at least in blue. Okay, so let's say that our uh, skin has got this Staphylococcus aureus infection in it, and we now want to uh, undergo a reaction. We want the body to respond, basically. We want a response that is going to try and remove this Staphylococcus aureus, okay? And this is the inflammatory response. Now, the inflammatory response basically uh, involves you bringing in troops to fight Staphylococcus aureus from the blood. So, within the bloodstream, you have proteins and cells, white blood cells, and the um, fancy name for a white blood cell, by the way, is a, a leukocyte. Okay, so that's just uh, the fancy name for a white blood cell. Sometimes people spell that um, C there, instead of putting C there, they put a K there. So you'll also hear this referred to, well, see this referred to as a leukocyte like that. Okay, but this is just the fancy name for a white blood cell. Okay, so in the blood, we have white blood cells and also 
uh, proteins, certain proteins which can help us uh, fight and contain the Staphylococcus aureus infection and stop it from spreading elsewhere. Okay, so we now need to get these this contents, these white blood cells and these proteins out of the blood and into this affected area. Okay, so the inflammatory response is really a response on the level of the blood vessels. So, we're now going to discuss the three different types of blood vessel that you're going to have uh, in the neighbourhood of your tissue. Okay, so let's just have a little review of the circulatory system then. So you start off with arteries, okay? So let's say this is a nice big artery here. And then off arteries, you get smaller little blood vessels coming off arteries. Okay, and these are very, very small blood vessels. These are not the sort of things you learn about in anatomy. Arteries are the things you learn about in anatomy. They are the um, big macroscopic blood vessels that you can see and palpate, and uh, which you need to know so that you can take pulses if ever you need to do that. Okay, so uh, the little uh, blood vessels that come off the arteries are called arterioles. Okay. Arterioles uh, then split into smaller blood vessels still known as capillaries. So let me draw some capillaries. And I'm not even going to draw these with a thickness, I'm just going to draw them as a line, okay? So these represent capillaries. Each one of these lines is a capillary. Okay, so I'll draw a few more. And we'll look at the structures of each of these types of blood vessel. Now the capillaries all reconverge to form a new blood vessel. Okay, and the capillaries are really the business end of the vasculature. They're where most of the exchange happens. So once they have gone through the tissue, and many capillaries will go through a tissue, and it's this sort of structure of having loads of capillaries running parallel to one another is known as a capillary bed. Okay, so a capillary bed. Then what happens is the capillaries reconverge to form a bigger blood vessel, which, as we'll see when we see the structure, is pretty much just a bigger capillary, and it's known as a venule. And then the venules join on to a vein, okay? So here is a vein. Right. Okay, so let me add a bit of colour onto this diagram to make it more interesting. So, we'll have the arteriole here in red, Okay, and then next up we'll have these capillaries. So the arteriole splits into absolutely loads of capillaries, and these capillaries are, are then when the, where the exchange actually occurs. So oxygen and glucose will cross out of the bloodstream into the tissue, and waste products such as carbon dioxide will pass back from the tissue into the bloodstream. Okay, so here are our capillaries in turquoise. And then we all have our venule in uh, blue here. Right, so let's now look at the structures of each of these, because the important thing to understand is that in our piece of tissue, we will have arterioles, which will split into capillaries, and then into venule, and then reconverge into venules. So in this affected area, we'll have lots of little capillaries, and then and giving rise to those capillaries will have little arterioles, and then the capillaries will then reform a venule. So it's important to understand that you don't just have capillaries in your tissue. Capillaries are small blood vessels, but as we'll see, venules and arterioles are pretty tiny as well. Uh, so it's not like these are the ones that are actually in the tissue and these are a respectable size. No, these are tiny as well. Okay, so let's see the structure of these uh, different types of blood vessels. So I'll start off with the most difficult one. We'll start off with the arterioles. The arterioles have the most layers. Okay, so here, let's draw an arteriole. Okay, so starting with a circle is a good um, starting point. So we're drawing a cross section, basically. So we're imagining that we've cut through the blood vessel perpendicular to the axis uh, which the blood vessel moves along. Okay, um, and we're now looking at the wall from the side. So we'll have a tube running through the middle. Okay, so here's the lumen of the blood vessel. And the lumen of the blood vessel will be lined by little endothelial cells. Let me draw these here. And these really are the stars of the show because these are what are going to actually um, undergo type 2 activation. 
Okay, so you have this ring of endothelial cells, and this hopefully uh, shows you how small these blood vessels are. But look, we don't have that many endothelial cells making up the entire circumference of uh, this um, blood vessel. Okay, so here's another endothelial cell, and then one more here. Okay, so we'll now put nuclei there. So these dots are nuclei. Okay, right, so that's the endothelial cell layer. Then surrounding the endothelial cell layer, you have uh, a layer that the endothelial cells are sitting on. So I'll show this in turquoise here. Okay, so this layer that the endothelial cells are sitting on is what's known as the basement membrane. Okay, and it mainly consists of collagen, but there are some other proteins in the basement membrane other than collagen, such as uh, fibrillin and uh, laminins. Okay, so in turquoise, this is the basement membrane. Okay, and this really is what uh, the endothelial cells sit on. They are attached to the basement membrane, and that's what's holding them in place, basically. Okay, then surrounding the basement membrane, the next layer that you have is a, a layer known as the subendothelial connective tissue, which I'll show in red. And again, this mainly consists of collagen. Okay, so here in red is the subendothelial connective tissue. And this is also often referred to as the subendothelial space, so I might put that name as well. So subendothelial endothelial space is a name that's often used for the subendothelial connective tissue. Okay, and then surrounding the subendothelial space, which remember is this layer of collagen really, you have another layer of connective tissue, another ring. Okay, but this isn't collagen this time. This is a ring of the protein elastin. Okay, and elastin is named elastin because it's very elastic. So this layer is a nice elastic layer, okay? So this is what's known as the internal elastic lamina of the blood vessel. Okay, so internal elastic lamina. Okay, and then surrounding the internal elastic lamina, what you then have is uh, a layer of smooth muscle cells. But before we discuss that layer of smooth muscle cells, let me just discuss with you the fact that these um, four layers here, the endothelial cells with the basement membrane, with the subendothelial space, and the internal elastic lamina, together, those four layers all are known as the uh, tunica intima. Okay, so tunica intima. Tunica means layer, intima means close. This is the layer which is close to the lumen of the blood vessel. Okay, now, surrounding the internal elastic lamina, you then have a layer of smooth muscle cells. So let me show these. So, let's say this is a smooth muscle cell here, and they're often compared to being spindle-like shapes. So they have um, thin ends. They're thin towards either of the two extreme ends, and then they've got a sort of thicker center. So let me try and draw a more archetypal one. There's a little closer. Then we have another one of these. Uh, spindle-shaped cells, another one here, another one here, and basically these smooth muscle cells, or vascular smooth muscle cells as they're more fully called, uh, they form these rings that surround the blood vessel, okay? So you have these rings of smooth muscle cells. Okay, so there we go, I've drawn the complete ring now. So each one of these is what's known as a vascular smooth muscle cell. Okay, and the important thing to understand is that they form these rings around um, the lumen of the blood vessel. Okay, so what's going to happen if these vascular smooth muscle cells uh, contract? Well, each one will get a shorter length. When it contracts, its length will get shorter. Now, if you can imagine what will happen if every single one of these vascular smooth muscle cells in this ring get shorter, then the circumference of the entire ring will get smaller, basically, because if each one gets smaller, what's going to happen is the circumference is going to get smaller. And when the circumference of the ring gets smaller, basically it looks like this, the diameter of the ring also gets smaller. 
Okay, so when these smooth muscle cells contract, what's going to happen is they're going to constrict, basically, and that's going to transfer to a constriction of the lumen of the blood vessel. So you're going to reduce the diameter of the lumen of the blood vessel. Okay, so this layer of smooth muscle cells here, okay, that surrounds um, the tunica intima is known as the tunica media, meaning middle layer, okay? Right, then surrounding the tunica media, and these final two layers will be very small in arterioles. They'll be bigger in arteries, but in arterioles they'll be very small. What you'll then have is, to some extent, another elastic lamina, known as the external elastic lamina. So I'll put this in blue here. Okay, so this is another layer of elastin, and this is called the external elastic lamina. External elastic lamina. And then surrounding the external elastic lamina, you'll finally have a little bit of collagen again. Okay. Um, and together, the external elastic lamina with the collagen that surrounds it outside it, uh, they are together known as the tunica adventitia. Okay, so I'll just draw in this little bit of collagen surrounding the external elastic lamina. Okay, so in yellow here, this is the external elastic Ooh, whoops, that's gone horrible. So here's the external elastic lamina, and surrounding it, we have this layer of collagen. Okay, and these two together, the combination of both of them together here, is then known as tunica adventitia, or that's the old name for these final two layers. But a name that people are trying to popularize is tunica externa, okay, for outer layer, basically, or external layer. Okay, now we'll continue our discussion of these different types of blood vessel in the next video.